Good afternoon. Welcome to Web Chat Wednesday at Emory University's Goizueta Business School. Today we will be talking about the two-year MBA uh, career success. I am Nicole Hippas. I will be moderator for today's chat. And I'm joined today by Liz from our MBA Career Management Center and two of our students, Jane and Lewis. I'm going to have them introduce themselves shortly, but first I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. We want this to be as interactive as possible, so please submit your questions at any time and we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, many of you already submitted questions when you registered and we have those in front of us here and we're going to start by, by answering some of those. Um, also, we are recording today's chat, so if you miss anything or have to jump off early, no worries. We will send you a recording of the chat and the slides that we show here today via email, and you'll get that within about a week. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to our panel here and have them introduce themselves, and then we'll get into your questions. Liz? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Liz Chilla. I'm a senior director in the Career Management Center, working with a full-time MBA program. So that means I work with students who are uh, considering or pursuing both the two-year and the one-year MBA at Goizueta Business School. I'm Lewis Wolf. I'm a second year here at Emory. Uh, graduating in May, uh, going to Ernst & Young in their M&A consulting group after school. I uh, did mechanical engineering in Baltimore, Maryland before moving down to Atlanta for school, and I'm our current uh, consulting club president as well. Wonderful. Um, I'm Jane Marazzo. I'm a second year in the two-year full-time MBA program. Um, prior to coming to Gozueta, I worked in public accounting at Ernst & Young and PwC doing international tax consulting. Um, came to school, pivoted, and now I'm joining General Mills full-time in the summer for brand management. Great. So we've got two career changers, uh, two very different career paths. So I think we're going to get a lot of insights from you guys, and I appreciate you guys uh, spending your time with us for the next hour or so. Um, so with that, let's kick off. Liz, can you just talk a little bit about how career paths may differ for folks who are uh, deciding between the one-year and the two-year MBA? Sure. Um, I think that the biggest difference between the one-year MBA program and the two-year MBA program is going to be that summer internship. So if you're thinking about exactly what it is that you want to be doing with the MBA, if it involves maybe a big career switch or um, a career path where that internship may be crucial in order to be able to find a full-time role, the two-year program could be a better fit because that internship allows you really useful experience and an opportunity to get in front of companies that will be looking at the internship as a feeder to a full-time role. So I think that internship can be the right fit for many students um, in different career paths, uh, such as marketing or banking uh, or consulting, as an example. Um, but that uh, that's usually the biggest difference is that they have that opportunity to learn more during the internship. So you both are, are career changers and did you know that going into the, the MBA program that you were looking to change your career paths? Yeah, uh, consulting was certainly my plan before coming back to business school uh, and I knew the two-year was necessary in order to make that switch. Uh, jumping from engineering to consulting, there's a lot of transferable skills and you kind of learn the first year how to sell that, uh, but as Liz discussed, Having that internship in between kind of legitimizes you in the eyes of employers. Uh, it's a more kind of low-key way for them to uh, get to know you before making a full-time offer. Uh, the conversion rates are typically fantastic from internship to full-time, but uh, definitely for the one-year program, it's more former BBAs or business background uh, students. Jane, did you even look at the one year or you knew the two year was the, the one because of that internship component? Um, I learned early on through coffee chats with um, Emory alum and Gozueta alum that moving from consulting and moving from tax into brand management, I would need that internship experience, whether just to know and validate that I wanted to do this field and also to show employers that I could hang and I could really <laughs> like stay up to beat. Um, so I learned that even before I started applying um, from coffee chats with professionals that I've met through LinkedIn and through alumni events here on campus that I would need the, the summer internship. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So Liz, let's just talk about when two-year MBA students join the program. When does that relationship actually start with the Career Management Center? Sure. It starts pretty early. So um, at the moment, 
you decide um, as an admitted student that you are committing to come to the Goizueta community, that's when that relationship can begin with the Career Management Center. So uh, we reach out to you, we introduce ourselves, and then we give you access to some resources through a career portal that we have. Um, some of those resources are things to help you think about the type of career you may want to be exploring um, a little bit more over the summer before you set foot on campus. Um, and some of those things are actual to-do lists to do over the summer. So start thinking about updating your resume um, or ordering business cards, uh, things that you can kind of get a jump start on because um, as the students can probably attest to, you start the recruiting process pretty early. Um, and so being able to get through uh, some of those smaller items and maybe some of that self-reflection in the summer gives you a chance to just hit the ground running. So. Uh, in addition to that, over the summer, students also have the opportunity to participate um, and listen in on what we call functional calls um, with the career coaches. So if you're interested in investment banking, as an example, um, our coach that works with a lot of the investment banking students may do a call over the summer so you can learn more about how you specifically prepare for that career path. So um, uh, yeah, pretty early on you have a chance to start working with us and, and making a strategy for yourself. What were, what were your first experiences with the Career Management Center? Absolutely. Um, I actually am a consortium student and we start preparing for the OP conference very early on. Um, I want to say we started working with our advisor as early as March and April, whether we were practicing our elevator pitches, our resume walks, developing cover letters um, to prepare us for the consortium conference in June. So we start very early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, additionally, everyone gets paired with a peer career coach from the second year class. Uh, so that'll probably happen, what, early June, if I'm not mistaken. A mm -hmm. uh, number of second years basically volunteer to help uh, fix resumes for first years before it goes to the career coaches for that final check mark. Mm -hmm. Liz, can you dive a little bit deeper into how the Career Management Center works with the students, either on group or individual level? Absolutely. It's, it's very personalized. I think it's one of the benefits of being in the Goizueta community is that it's a pretty small community and so you have a chance to really get to know your coach um, and the Career Management Center as a whole. Um, so we try to come up with a, a personalized plan and strategy with each student to figure out what their background is, what it is that they hope to be doing, and come up with some good tactics uh, and resources that will help them on their career path. Because not every single student's career path will look the same. Uh, the resources that, you, that they use may be a little bit different. And so um, a student typically works very closely with their CMC coach, uh, as well as with other students in the Goizueta community to come up with a strategy that makes the most sense for them. What were your guys' expectations coming in on, on the services that you'd get, how that interaction would take place, and were they met? Were they hopefully exceeded? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember exactly what my expectations were two years ago. <laughs> um, I, I, I think that I thought the onus would be fully on the CMC, uh, the Career Management Center, and a lot of it is they help you through your first block of classes with um, a professional development class going through resume things, how to research companies, how to kind of build your target list. Um, but the clubs play a really big role in that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, and it's not a club where you're meeting weekly and just talking about the industry. Uh, the consulting club is built around uh, career prep and helping first years prep uh, for the networking that takes place during the fall and interviewing that takes place in um, early January. Uh, so it's, it's really a community uh, that builds together to help you with the career prep. Uh, the CMC plays a very important role, um, and they're the experts in it, uh, but also the second year students and first year students work really closely together throughout the program. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I think to add to that, um, my expectations when I came were very high, and they were met, so <laughs> <laughs> very positive Good. experience. Um, coming from my background, I knew that entering into interviews especially casing interviews for marketing that I would really need a lot of guidance and help and the CMC were always available to help me whether I was prepping for interviews, anticipating questions, finding and tracking down alumni at companies. Um, it was really helpful having people that I could just go to quick minute, you know, on the minute trying to get those answers before interviews. Mm -hmm. 
So um, one of the things we've mentioned is the personalized service and we have those career coaches. Can you elaborate on what a career coach is and how do we actually match students with career coaches? That's a great question, yeah. So um, once a student decides that they are going to be coming to Goizueta, they get a career interest survey. And so in that survey, we ask them a number of different questions about their previous work experience, but also why they're getting an MBA um, and what types of career paths they hope to pursue while they're here. Um, and we use that survey data in order to be able to match them up with a coach in the Career Management Center that uh, typically focuses on the same area that, that a specific student would be interested in. Um, so we make that match initially, at least to kind of start the conversation. Um, the great thing about the way our office works, though, is that you are not specifically um, assigned to that career coach indefinitely throughout your time in the MBA. And I know um, I've worked with students who may have um, been assigned to one coach, uh, and so there's a lot of movement. It's a lot of fluidity, I think. Um, so you have a chance to get um, uh, advice and, and support from anybody who is a career coach within the Career Management Center. Um, but that at least gets the process started. So once you're assigned to one, they reach out to you, and then you begin the relationship from there. That's great. And I think something really beneficial to add to that are a lot of the career coaches have actually worked in the industries that we're mm -hmm. pursuing. Um, so I started with one coach who came from marketing and then kind of evolved and started working with a second coach who's actually worked in brand management and worked at General Mills. So it was incredible insight hearing how her career panned out and how that could be relevant to my own. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we, there's a lot that the Career Management Center offers that's obviously outside of the curriculum. But we take professional development pretty seriously <laughs> and we actually incorporate it into the curriculum as well. Can you elaborate on, on how that works? And then I'd love to hear from you guys, yeah. your experiences. Yeah, the professional development course is a course that's incorporated into the core courses that you do when you initially start in the program. Um, and we do take it very seriously. I think that course kind of sets you up for success as you're thinking about the recruiting process moving forward. So we cover everything from what happens during on-campus recruiting to how do you do a behavioral interview uh, to you know what is said during a coffee chat and how do you send an appropriate thank you note? Um, and we try to make that course, over the last few years, we've tried to make it a bit more hands-on. We use it as a chance to do more practice. I know we've had second-year students come in and help with the course to give the first-year students a chance to do a little bit more hands-on practice, whether it's interview skills or giving their pitch. Um, so that course, uh, you kind of jump right in and have a chance to practice what you're going to be doing throughout the recruiting process. But I'd like to hear your experiences with it. <laughs> I think one of the big benefits of having it as an actual course is that it requires you to participate and it <laughs> requires you to lean into the experience, learn how to adapt these skills and incorporate them into your recruiting. Um, course semester is challenging um, and it's easy to get you know, perhaps distracted, but having it as an actual course, a part of the curriculum, requires that you learn, engage, lean in, and adapt these skills. Mm -hmm. Lewis, what do you think? Uh, not too much to add to that. I think <laughs> there's, there's a ton of resources available through the Career Center, um, and they basically, the PD course in First Block gives you kind of access to that library and tells you how to use these tools. Um, it's business school where all adults, you're not going to have your hand held, you know, throughout the entire semester, the entire year, but um, having that early on is really great mm -hmm. to build a foundation and let you uh, kind of know what's out there for you to be able to help yourself throughout the semester. And then, as we mentioned earlier, their offices are always open. I was probably in there as much as anyone else <laughs> bothering Liz and Brian and the rest of the CMC. We appreciate it. That's what they're for, they're for exactly. right? <laughs> yeah, we appreciate yeah. people in the office all the time. It's a good thing. Yeah. Um, so we've laid the, the groundwork a little bit talking about the services and the relationship that the students have with the, the Career Management Center. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the results, right? So internships are a vital component of the recruiting process for the, the two-year MBA students. Um, when does that internship search start um, and, and how does that unfold? Yeah, it starts pretty early, um, but it will depend specifically on the, the career path that a student is pursuing. So I think the preparation begins as early um, as even before you set foot on campus, you know, you start thinking about updating your resume, you start thinking about maybe how you want to introduce yourself, and then we jump in in professional development course and 
uh, as Lewis was saying, kind of laying the foundation for how you prepare for internship recruiting. Um, but then depending on the specific role you're looking for, you could have interviews as early as September and October if you're looking at jobs that maybe come through some national career conferences. Or you could be interviewing um, as what's happening right now on campus, um, doing on-campus internship interviews, usually in the January time period. So I'd say the short answer is that internship preparation and recruiting can kind of happen throughout the cycle of that first year, starting pretty early. But your specific timeline will be dependent on the jobs you're looking at. I'd love for each of you to talk about the internships that you did, the program, and then the process by which you actually identified and secured the internship. Sure. Would you like to start? Sure. Um, with brand management, we start pretty early on, um, and a lot of the large consumer packaged good CPG companies go to the large natural, na national conventions mm -hmm. that are in the summer and over the fall. Um, so most students that I'm aware of probably got their offers during that time. That's when I got my offer for an internship with General Mills. Um, I got it at OP and then circled back with them at the National Black Conference. Um, then you spend a couple of months sort of getting to know the company, following up, having super days on campus. Um, most marketers had to make decisions by the end of the year. Um, so most of us knew where we were going for our summer internships by that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lewis, what about you? Uh, consulting and I guess banking is probably a pretty similar timeline uh, is, is a little bit delayed in that regard. Um, and while marketing might be more through the conferences, uh, there's a pretty standard on-campus procedure specifically for consulting. So the first presentations actually start, I think, August 31st mm -hmm. of, of this year was the first one. So it's about a month after you get onto campus. Um, but you're kind of preparing the whole way leading up to that through the stuff we discussed through the CMC and the clubs to get ready for that point. Um, and throughout the fall, you have company events, networking events, um, and you're getting to know the companies, feel each other out for, for fit, for um, which companies would be on your shortlist to interview for. Mm -hmm. uh, December 1st is typically the resume drop deadline uh, for consulting, where interviews are in early January and you're usually done by early February. Banking, that kind of just ends about a month earlier in December. Uh, and similar process, although bankers might be uh, flying up to New York a little more often to meet <laughs> with their networking partners. <laughs> so you actually got a consulting internship with EY, yes, correct? Yes, yes. Um, and it turns out both of you ended up with full-time offers. Yes with the companies you intern for. Um, how, how did that take place? Where, was that the goal? Were you just looking to get some experience and then explore more? Uh, certainly, yeah, the goal is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, so, we want the offer. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, in terms of whether or not someone would choose to recruit uh, the second year, um, if for whatever reason you don't end up with the internship of your dreams, if it just didn't work out how you thought it would, um, for, for whatever reason that might be, uh, there is plenty of re-recruitment opportunity mm -hmm. in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I was really, really happy uh, with my summer experience. I was actually up in New York City uh, with that group. And fortunately for me, they're flexible with offices because now I'm going to be staying in Atlanta by choice um, with the same group uh, this year. But uh, for consulting this year, um, we probably hired another you know, 50% of the number of internships direct to full-time this year, mm -hmm. um, some of whom uh, either decided later that they mm -hmm. wanted to go into consulting or uh, decided that their internship company just wasn't for them for whatever reason. Yeah, absolutely. I think what's really interesting when you start your internship, you'll work with students that are from Gozueta. Um, I interned with a fellow student, but there are also plenty of students from other parts of the country, and everyone comes with a different goal in mind. Maybe they want to try the industry. Maybe they want to try the function. Maybe they want to test out the region that they're interning. Um, so when I was in Minneapolis with General Mills this summer, I kind of checked all those boxes. I really wanted to know that I liked uh, the Midwest, wanted to know that I liked marketing, make sure that I liked CPG. So I was kind of testing out everything all at once. Um, I would think with an MBA, we're a little competitive, so getting the offer is a big part of that <laughs> experience. Um, but I know many people who even got offers and decided that they wanted to go in different directions. Um, people didn't get offers and now have plenty of opportunities from on-campus recruiting back at school in their second year. I think the best way to look at it is all the doors open at once and there are so many paths you can take forward. Um, and the MBA here at Gozueta really facilitates that exploration. Mm -hmm. Liz, I think they, they both touched on this, but for those students who either decide 
they get an offer and they decide, you know what, this isn't the right fit, or I, I want to explore more, or maybe they don't get an offer. What is their next step for mm -hmm. finding that, that next um, role? Yeah, I think the support from the Career Management Center doesn't go away, so you still have an opportunity to any student come back after their internship, debrief a little bit about what their experience was, and talk about what they want to do moving forward. And so, um, in the same way that internship recruiting can be very structured and opportunities happen uh, on campus for full-time, I mean, excuse me, for internship recruiting, the same thing will happen for full-time recruiting. So if somebody decides they may want to look at another opportunity, uh, they may want to pursue maybe a slightly different path, they will have jobs that they can apply to the same way that they did for internships. And they'd be in good company. There are a lot of students that choose to continue to recruit full-time if they want to see maybe if there's something out there that could be a better fit. So um, we provide the same kind of support and the students usually come in to full-time recruiting with a little bit of a different mindset. You know, they're better prepared, they've gone through the process before, um, and they usually have great outcomes if, it's, if that's the route they choose to go. But it depends on the individual students. Some are very happy to take the offer that mm -hmm. they have because they had a great experience. So you see both things happen, and we uh, in the Career Management Center just like to be updated on what a student is thinking. Great. So one of the things that we like to tout is obviously the, the connectivity that we have to our alumni network. Um, what role do our alumni play in the, the career process for our mm -hmm. current students? Sure. I'd love to hear the students, uh, their experiences kind of specifically about it, but I'll say in general, um, the small community at Goizueta, I think, allows that alumni community um, to be really engaged with what is happening on campus um, and what is happening during the recruiting process. So if a student has questions or is curious about a company or curious specifically about the interview process with a, sp with a company, um, they can reach out to alumni and they will help provide some support and guidance guidance um, and information that can be really useful to students as they're trying to um, narrow down maybe the list of companies they're considering and then be prepared to put their best foot forward when they start interacting with them. Yeah, the, the small community definitely makes it that much more meaningful when you meet someone from Emory. Um, for, and I'm not going to name schools, but <laughs> I have co-interns from other schools who were literally meeting their classmates within the same internship for the same time once they got to the summer internship, and that's absurd to me. There's 172 people yeah. in our year, and we all know who each other are. Uh, so the alumni network is really strong for that reason, um, for that kind of small community, that consistency. Um, and then from the perspective of the consulting route, uh, the alumni who work at these companies who are from Emory are the ones who are coming back to Emory to lead recruitment. Uh, there's a couple of allies that didn't necessarily attend Emory but are involved with Emory recruitment heavily nonetheless. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, uh, you have a lot to talk about because you came from the same program, might have had the same mm -hmm. professors, uh, and it's, it's set up that way so that you can really uh, get to know the company as well. Mm -hmm. I actually, one of the biggest components of my decision to come to Gozueta was the alumni network from, you know, coming from tax and pivoting in. I started reaching out to alumni on LinkedIn, started having conversations, and what really impressed me was, you know, directors, vice presidents at some very reputable companies and firms were more than willing to help me, share with me their experience. Um, and that, to me, was a first initial sign that this community was going to help me in my career change, in my career path. And that just continued on when I started recruiting and trying to get to know companies and trying to understand, like, what is General Mills like? How are they similar to Clorox? What is P&G? I had ample opportunities to meet and connect with alumni, whether in person, on campus, over the phone, web chats, you name it, they were readily available. And that was really helpful for me in trying to map like what experience I wanted, where I wanted to go, and what I wanted to look for in my career. And that was just from the alumni, and it was incredible. That's great. Um, so we see, we have a chart up on the screen that the folks can see the employment um, sources. And about 56% get it from that internship. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of other ways to get that, um, that offer. Can you just touch again a little bit on some of those different paths? Sure. So um, from their internship is one way. I think the other way that we kind of touched on a little bit is that there is some school facilitated full-time recruiting that happens on campus. So if somebody doesn't go back to their internship company, they have a chance to re-recruit for something full-time on campus. And then we also have um, area that I think we refer to as Guizueta sources. And so uh, again, kind of coming back to that small community, it really does play a huge part in the career uh, recruiting process is that you know it can be faculty, it can be alumni telling you about job openings, 
happenings. It can be classmates. Um, there are a lot of things that people hear about uh, in terms of opportunities that come through Goizueta sources that may be even outside the structured recruiting process um, because you have the flexibility to look for some of that for full time. Um, and then for some students, uh, it's also initiated by their own personal network. If, if someone has a specific idea about where they want to be, either the region or the company or the industry, uh, sometimes they'll help to facilitate that um, on their own and they still have the full support of the Career Management Center to help them come up with a good plan to do that. So we have two prime examples here of um, career changers who are going into what we would consider traditional MBA career paths, right? We have a consultant and we have a marketer. Um, can you talk a little bit about the breakdown of the jobs by function and in industry? Sure. Um, consulting tends to be one that's really popular. Um, I, I think Lewis can probably talk about that a little bit just with how many people are involved in yeah. the consulting club. <laughs> yep. um, but consulting, I think for a lot of students at Goizueta tends to be a popular area to consider just because of the, the different exposure that you have um, to, to different functions, to different industries, uh, and the chance you have to learn. Um, marketing and finance, um, I think, tend to, to follow close behind in terms of areas that are very popular with students and you see a lot of people go into those specific industries. And then certainly other areas like general management, supply chain, operations, real estate, um, those areas then kind of um, fall behind those top three. Um, and the great news is that we have uh, a lot of opportunity and alumni in all of those areas depending on what a student is most interested in. So for those folks who maybe want to find one of those non-traditional mm -hmm. jobs that you mentioned, um, are, there, are there enough resources for them? Or is most of the career management center focused on the bulk of the students who are looking at those more traditional career paths? Oh, no, absolutely. I think there are, there are lots of resources. They just may look a little bit different. So we spend maybe more time talking with the student about who is on their target list of companies if they're looking for something that's maybe a bit more specialized, like healthcare or real estate or something um, in, in maybe possibly one of those areas. And we spend some time talking about how to connect them to the companies or the alumni that could help to facilitate um, an opportunity to apply for a job or interview for a job. So it may not look like structured MBA recruiting, but you still are coming up with a very individualized plan with the CMC. So I think Jane and uh, Lewis had some pretty clear career objectives coming mm -hmm. in, but that's maybe not always the case. So mm -hmm. I know that we have a lot of students coming in and they, they know they want to change, mm -hmm. but they're not quite sure what that change is going to be. Yeah. How do you help them find their path? Yeah, it's tough because things start very early. And so um, one of the things that we recommend, and I, I, I alluded to this before, that there are some resources that students can use over the summer um, to do a bit of self-reflection and exploration before they get on campus. We offer um, some things like surveys, career assessment surveys, for students to maybe start that process and think about what could be a good fit for their interests and their skills. So that's something that they can start to explore. Um, I always tell students that I'm talking to before they get to campus that LinkedIn is available to everyone. And so <laughs> as you are thinking about maybe companies you're interested in or career paths you want to explore, sometimes that can be a helpful thing to react to and look to see what other Goizueta alumni are doing. Um, and then certainly a lot of that exploration happens on campus. Um, in conversation with your career coach, in the classes that, you, that you're attending. Um, so, you know, we, we encourage students to figure out what is the best fit for them uh, and then just keep us updated so we can talk through what the best plan is going to be. So Jane, you mentioned that um, you knew you wanted to go into marketing, mm -hmm. but you were kind of testing out through that internship, CPG, and that brand function. Did was that was that it for you? Was that the initial goal, or were you just that was the initial offer, and it happened to be a good fit? Um, kind of everything. <laughs> um, pivoting in, there's just some anxiety of like, is this exactly what I want to do? And a little bit of self-created anxiety of now I'm getting my MBA and it has to be exactly what I want. Um, I have to reach these goals. But I think the beauty of um, work, you know, having your MBA and having the internship is that you are afforded the flexibility. Um, I was able to work with various teams within my internship, which is something I wanted to see. Um, and I, I got to work with the Consumer Insights team, which is similar to brand management in some regards. Um, and just having that duality and that ability to to see various sides of the company helped me in choosing my path forward. Um, but I think also something to remember is um, at Gozueta, you front load your core classes in your first semester, so you get a broad exposure to content that you'll most likely see in your internship. 
but also your second semester you're able to pick all of your electives. So that's when I was able to take various marketing functioning classes and I ended up taking a brand management class, really enjoyed it, compared that to an integrated marketing communications which is much more of a traditional idea of marketing and even just in class that comparison I was able to make and see that I had a, a leaning towards one function over the other. Yeah, and that's a great example of using your electives to really map out and solidify that, that career path. Louis, did you do anything similar with your electives? Uh, yeah, I, so I take a combination of classes that are relevant to my career, of just professors that I like or that I find generally interesting. Uh, and Jane touched on this, but I think the benefit of an MBA is how broad it is. I mean, you can go into one career path for the summer and come out with a new set of skills that are still relevant for mm -hmm. most of the other career paths that are uh, out of business school. Um, I've actually been aligned to m many finance classes since I've been in school, even though that's you know, not typically something tied uh, as hard and technically to consulting as maybe some of the other classes. But it's uh, following your interests and uh, building a broad set of skills. And the education is about synthesizing disparate pieces of information, um, not necessarily just building really, really hard technical skills in one field. Um, so it gives you that opportunity to jump around. If you're not sure what you want, you can explore, you can take an internship that seems interesting because it'll build out a new skill set, and then you can come back in the fall and say, hey, I'm ready to do this new career path now. Um, that's even different from my internship. So um, you interned in New York. Yes. You interned in Minneapolis. Minneapolis. <laughs> Um, you're staying here by choice. Yes, you're conscious. going back to <laughs> yes. the Midwest. Um, I think a question we often get is, if I go to Emory, am I stuck, right? <laughs> stuck <laughs> in Atlanta. Uh, and obviously we have a lot of strong partnerships um, with companies here, but Atlanta is actually the number three city in the U.S. for most um, Fortune 500 headquarters, which I think people often overlook. Uh, Atlanta is the gem for that. Can you talk a little bit about um, where students go um, post MBA for their jobs? Are they stuck yeah. here in Atlanta? Yeah, I'll let I'll let um, Lewis and, and Jane elaborate on it a little bit from their own personal experiences. But I think to your point, there are great partnerships here if a student wants to stay in Atlanta. And I think sometimes students come in with the idea that maybe Atlanta, and then they spend some time here, they get to know the companies here, and it moves a little bit higher on their list. Mm -hmm. And so you do see students that may consider it even for a couple of years um, because of the opportunities that exist here and just the connections that they've made with alumni uh, and the companies that that are here. But if uh, you are interested in being in a different part of the country or you're primarily pursuing companies that are in a different part of the country, you're going to find alumni uh, anywhere, um, especially at some of those larger companies that have a significant presence. So um, I, I think the support exists for regardless of what you're looking for, but many students do consider the Southeast region just because those partnerships are so strong. Yeah, I'd say you can pretty much get to any major city that you want to. Um, the function of a lot of people staying in the Southeast is a lot of people are from the Southeast, and that might be even why some people choose specifically to come to Emory in the first place. So uh, when you see that big percentage in the bottom right corner of the map, that doesn't just mean that you're, you have to be here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, my internship was in New York when I was going full time. I was given the offer between pretty much any major city you could name on both coasts of the country. Um, and you know, there's more concentration here. The alumni network um, might be a little bit stronger in Atlanta, but you have it everywhere. Um, and you can really make your own path. Uh, for consulting, the only thing I'd add is that some of these companies do recruit specifically for their Atlanta office. That's the team that comes to campus. It's not a national hiring. But typically, if you stay there for a year and you've made the connections, it's very easy to move offices thereafter. I think a big part of the equation too, uh, especially as students come to Atlanta, um, the cost of living in Atlanta compared <laughs> to other U.S. cities for the opportunities you have is really great. So what it costs to live here, um, especially on your brand new MBA salary, is very beneficial if you're comparing it to an L.A. or a San Francisco or New York City. So a lot of students, that's a big component of that decision. For me, I knew that going into CPG and looking at the large big brand houses, I was going to have to move out of this region um, and that really opened me up to pretty much everywhere. A lot of these companies were in the Midwest, which was a shift for me. I've never tried life in the Midwest uh, other than the internship this summer. Um, but there are companies all along the, the East Coast, West Coast. You find them in Texas. There are opportunities everywhere. Um, we get exposure to them on campus as well as at the national conventions where 
honestly, having the Gozueta name on your resume gets you in the door and gets you conversation started with these large companies that not all schools will have. Mm -hmm. So it's good. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the, I mean, the reason <laughs> I'm staying in Atlanta and you reminded me of it, I was probably being too informational, not personal enough. <laughs> but, I mean, the reason I'm staying in Atlanta is because I've made so many friends here and have such a great community here in Atlanta now that I just don't want to leave. Um, no. Uh, you know, when I compare that to New York, where I had some family and some friends from undergrad or from home, um, I, I have a lot of close friends here, and that's why I decided yeah. to stay in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. Atlanta Atlanta's a pretty cool place. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's transition a little bit, and uh, this is going to be a great question for Lewis and Jane. Um, how can students leverage the student clubs and organizations and interest groups to help with their career prep? And you are the head of the consulting yes, club. Yes. So I would let, let's start with you. Sure. Um, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we actually meet with uh, those that fill out the career management uh, survey uh, indicating consulting. We'll reach out to the whole class, but specifically to that group. Uh, this year we set up kind of a timeline prep of here's just the lay of the land, uh, actually at the very beginning of orientation. Um, I was fortunately able to fly back into Atlanta from New York this summer and put on that presentation for the first years. Uh, so we kind of lay that out right at the beginning. Um, and it's about doing the right thing at the right time. As I said, networking is throughout the fall. So we partner with uh, the first years and kind of do that knowledge transfer of here's how you network, here's the basics of what you need to know at this point in time um, so that they can start to be successful going to these career events. The, company presentations, the marquee event at the aquarium, the Gozueta Career Connections, GCC. Mm -hmm. um, and then throughout the fall, we meet one-on-one -on -one with first years, whether it's to tell them about our internships so that they can learn a little bit more about our firm, uh, whether it's to do uh, case interview preparation, whether it's just to practice resume walkthroughs or behavioral interviews. Um, you know, there's a lot of, it's a one-to-one -one ratio of second years to first years, um, whereas the CMC has uh, obviously not a one-to-one -one ratio of, of people. So uh, the club is super involved in helping first years in tandem with the CMC prep for that career throughout uh, career and the internship interviews throughout the fall. One thing I want to add to that um, is sort of the culture at Gozueta really surprised me. I, I think when I was about to come to business school, I anticipated it would be hyper competitive and cutthroat, so to speak. But the school really has a very unique spirit think that it's instilled in our core values. I think it's taught to us through the CMC, through our program office, our dean, but it really is a collaborative environment. I've been so impressed by classmates helping me interview, giving me insight into their, you know, maybe we're both going for the same interview the same day, and yet they will help me. I got asked this question. They're going to go for this. That is very unique to Gozueta. I have not come across it at any school, any friends I have at different universities. And that really shows, like Lewis was mentioning, when you look at students helping each other, proofread cover letters, interview prep, doing the resume walks. Um, and it's not always just second years to first years. It's a lot of students in the same year, same program, helping each other. Um, and what I really love, too, about Gozueta is it's almost like as soon as you get your offer, you sign, you make your decision, you're not on the bench. You get back in the game, and you're helping your classmates. It's, it's just a part of the culture. To not help would be, it just wouldn't fit in. So once you get your offer, you're now helping people prep. You're helping people find industry reports. You're helping people read their cover letters. So it's a really great environment to be in. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, and I'd say that's structural, too, what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we have 170 people in our mm -hmm. class means you know, you can't hide. You can't yeah. <laughs> step on someone else's back and expect it to not get around. Um, and so knowing everybody and it kind of forces that community yes. in, a, in a good way. Um, whereas if we had 600 people in our class and didn't know each other, then you know who cares? I can do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, so true. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I love hearing the stories from students, and yeah. you hear them time and time again. It's you know we keep our program intentionally small to create this community of support, and so you have the the personalized services from mm -hmm. our career management center, but you also have a team of um, students built around you um, to make sure that everyone's succeeding. That's terrific. Um, so Liz, we've talked about um, the services, mm -hmm. and uh, we obviously have really strong career outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, what should students expect to do while in the program to get a job? So we've talked a little bit about it not just being a one-way street, mm -hmm. not just they show up and you open the drawer full of jobs and mm -hmm. hand <laughs> one and, and they walk <laughs> away. Nice. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, 
what should students expect to do and to how to work with you? Sure, yeah, I think, um, I mean, I think a level of preparation is necessary in order to be able to kind of meet halfway. Uh, the Career Management Center meeting the students kind of where they are. So um, I think when a student comes in prepared to my office to say these are the types of companies I'm targeting, this is the type of industry I'm targeting, this is what I'm thinking about doing next, and then they use me as a way to uh, confirm and provide kind of additional um, information, resources, or contacts based on what they've been able to share with me. So the best advice I can give um, is only as good as the information that's been given to me. So being able to come prepared to talk about what it is you hope to do will allow me to be more detailed in my guidance. Um, I think beyond that just working hard and staying engaged in the process. Um, it can be a marathon, you know, to go through the recruiting process, especially for some industries that start really early. Uh, but you have a lot of support around you, so keeping your energy up, staying engaged in the process, keeping everybody updated on what's going on, um, those are just, the, I think, the really important parts. So it's, it's all about preparation and attitude and energy, I feel like, at the end of the day. And we've been hearing a lot of that, I think, come through from, yeah. from the advice from the two of you. Any other advice um, that you'd like to share, things that you were so glad you did or wish you had done differently? Oh man, I'm going to have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one, and you kind of touched on it with attitude, I think a really big part of the career search is knowing that probably what you did the first time you got a job or the second time will be different mm -hmm. for your MBA just because you are going to compete against all the other top 20 schools and then beyond them all the other programs. So knowing and being open to that change that you might have to memorize your star stories which is a type of interview question that we use um, pretty pretty uniformly across the MBA programs um, being polished in a certain way perhaps writing in a certain way on your cover letter just being open to that change um, and that's more of an attitude but I wouldn't worry too much I think that's something I wish I could tell myself going you know looking back um, your passion is going to drive you you're going to Expel that in your interviews and in your research and in your coffee chats. So just come with that passion and you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Well said. Okay. <laughs> you're going to se second that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. Liz, we had a question come in from a student that was asking about um, fellowship opportunities. Mm. Um, can you talk a little bit about fellowships and what someone might learn in a, through a fellowship that might help them in a career path? Sure, so the different fellowships that a student may, uh, may sure. have, a, have um, an opportunity to be named to while they're in the program. Yes. So it gives you access to different resources within the Goizueta community generally. So different fellowships could look different depending on um, the specifics of, of which fellowship you may be named to, but um, I think that it gives you access to, to faculty, um, to different types of events and resources. So it, it's kind of like a little bit of a deeper dive potentially into the area that you're most interested in, and in some cases that may be an area that is a little bit more specific than just the types of um, opportunities that come through, maybe more structured MBA recruiting. So I think it gives you um, more access um, and potentially more knowledge to be able to be successful in the process. Perfect. We had another question come in that um, I think we've touched on, but if you want to elaborate any more. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about the, the type of workshops um, that the the Career Management Center offers. So obviously there's mm -hmm. a lot of um, career coaching and um, interview prep and resume prep, um, but we also offer a variety of workshops. Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate on what some of those T touch on? Yeah, absolutely. So we talked a little bit about the professional development course, which as we mentioned kind of gives the foundation of different types of skills that you would need to know going into recruiting. Um, that happens kind of in the early part of the fall semester. So we think about workshops, we actually do a career week as we get a little bit later into the fall and it gets closer to um, the recruiting timeline for internships. And that career week is where we really dive into I think the workshops in a little bit more detail. And so it's a chance to do m even more hands-on practice maybe for interview skills, uh, whether it's case interviewing for consulting or marketing or behavioral interviewing that comes up in most industries. Um, uh, it could be uh, specifically talking about, um, you know, things like finance prep, uh, if you're going to be going into a finance-related internship. Uh, it could be about networking. It could be about how best to present yourself uh, during a recruiting event. So the workshops tend to be a bit more specific and more interactive as we get a little bit later into the process. And uh, career week is when we start to introduce new workshops. Uh, so that students have a chance to come and interact with our office right before recruiting begins. Okay. We have several questions actually from some international students mm -hmm. wondering how does that um, 
that recruitment process differ for an international student versus uh, someone who is a domestic student? Sure. Uh, I think uh, much of the, re the recruiting process will be the same in terms of how you apply to jobs and how you interact with companies at presentations uh, and through on-campus recruiting generally. Um, but for international students, they have a chance to interact with our office a little bit earlier during the international orientation process um, before onboarding begins. And so they have a chance to meet with us in the CMC uh, to talk a little little bit about um, their specific recruiting process and how they will research companies uh, and any specific questions or challenges um, or um, you know curiosities that they have about recruiting in the US and so I think the access to the career management center a little bit early is one major differentiator there uh, and then um, how they continue to work with our office will be dependent on the different career path that they're choosing okay so we do have several questions um, coming in from folks who are also interested in career change, making career changes. And so they wanted to hear from the two of you about how do employers um, view your, your past experience when it varies so differently from the path that you're trying to, to move toward? So I really think that's about crafting your story. Mm -hmm. um, in your background, you have a very broad set of skills. Um, I was in data center design and construction management. Um, so it was analytical skills, project management, working with people across all levels of an organization and multiple organizations. Um, you have to start to really understand during the fall what the requirements of each mm -hmm. job are. Uh, and by doing that, through talking to second years, through talking to uh, the career coaches, through talking to people at the companies, you start to understand the skills that they're looking for. And when you craft your story, it's not, oh, I was an engineer in this field. It's here are the things I did and the skills I have that are transferable to your role specifically um, and to this job. And that can be a very compelling story, um, regardless of your background. Uh, so we work heavily with you to try to figure out what that overlap is um, from your background to a specific job. And it might be that uh, one role um, and another role have completely different relevant factors from your past, uh, and it's about understanding the job well enough in order to sell that story. Yeah, I think you hit it right on. Um, just some personal experience, a lot of the CPG companies, you'll find it like hit or miss for brand. Um, some of them really want former marketers, former sales reps to go into the brand management positions. Um, and I, you know, I encountered that coming from my undergraduate educations in economics um, and tax. So. I really didn't have anything to offer to those companies, um, so that was frustrating in some part, but when I look at that role, it may not have been a great fit for me, whereas now um, with companies like General Mills or some other um, CPGs, the way they run their functions is they look for a breadth of, of information or experience, diversity in the candidates because the role itself will require you to think different ways, have different skill sets like Lewis mentioned, so um, it's not always a straight path. You might realize like well this company is not a great fit for me but there are companies that are saying well we need someone who has a finance background or economics background even though they're doing brand management because this role will require them to do profit and loss management for example mm -hmm. um, so it that's a little I'm mean, getting probably in the weeds for a webinar but um, the, it, it it exists but you can transfer those skills and you will find the company that is looking for what you offer and Liz, that's obviously something that the Career Management Center helps them craft that narrative around? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I think a big part of what we think about, but starting with professional development and then certainly in the individual meetings you have with your coach, is trying to come up with where you can connect the dots between what you've done previously and what you're going to be doing in the role. And I think that process iterates over time. You know, the more you have conversations with alumni and understand what their background was and then understand what they do day to day, you start to hear things that are similar to skills that, or strengths that you have. Um, and so we look for students to find ways to connect those dots and then help them to craft that story in a way that's um, clear and um, you know exciting to hear for the on the employer side one other question we had that um, maybe Liz you can touch on a little mm -hmm. bit is um, how do your services or does the job hunt or the, the, the career search process differ for those who have more experience versus mm -hmm. those who have less experience so um, those coming in with maybe three or four years experience versus those coming in with seven or eight? No, that's a great question. I think um, it's 
It will depend on the type of role that someone is looking for. You know, for some more structured positions, whether, um, maybe, you know, if you think about consulting or banking as an example, most people for like an MBA internship could be coming in all at the same level, whether they are coming in with six years of work experience or had maybe three years before. Um, and so we're just trying to allow them to tell their story in a way that makes sense for a specific role. But if a student is uh, doing a more kind of individualized search, say they have more years of work experience and they're looking for something that's a little bit more unique and specific, that's again, I think, where we're so happy to have an office that can be so personalized in the way that we work with students. And so, um, you know, there may be a case where it makes sense to highlight that additional work experience because it's a real asset for the job that they're looking for. And if somebody's coming in maybe with a little bit less, how do we talk about their career progression Progression in a way um, that shows that they have the same level of skills, maybe even if the years aren't there. So the stories tend to be very individual, and that's why um, we're lucky to have that kind of relationship where we can provide that individual support. That's terrific. So with that, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up now. We appreciate all the questions that came in. If we weren't able to get to your questions, some of them were a little um, specific to situations. Um, we'll do our best to address them off air. Um, and please feel free to reach out at any time. We do have Quick Connect and uh, consultations available, so you can reach out to admissions at any time. Um, and if you have any career-specific related questions, we can certainly get you in touch with our career team as well. Um, Lewis and Jane, thank you so much for your thank perspectives. You. Um, great insights for our prospective students out there. Um, I'd just like to mention again that we did record this chat. Um, we will send you an email within a week that has a link to the recording as, long as, as well as a link to the slides. So if you missed anything, you can um, review it again there. We have a couple other webinars coming up. Um, these are more topical and where you can get a taste of some of the content that you might uh, engage with in the classroom and get a feel for some of our faculty members um, who teach in the program. So those are on screen and we'll send you links to register for those as well in the email. Uh, thank you again for your time and your questions.